The United States' unclear crypto policies have led businesses like Ripple to explore investing outside the nation. Brad Garlinghouse has claimed, the Ripple CEO advised the U.S. to follow the U.K. and Singapore. How do you think this will affect the cryptocurrency and the U.S. economy? We will answer these questions in today's video. The FedNow Quick Payment Service is set to launch soon, and on May 11, the Metal blockchain team announced that it would be integrated with FedNow. Metal users may now utilize the send receive feature of FedNow to immediately convert their cash to stablecoin and back. The partnership between Fee FedNow and Metal Blockchain exemplifies the growing convergence of blockchain technology and conventional banking. Metallicus has created a cryptocurrency network called Metal Blockchain, which is based on a fork of the original Avalanche source code. It was created so that developers working on decentralized financial DeFi systems would have alternatives that wouldn't break the law. As a sign of its dedication to identity verification and anti-money laundering, AML. Safeguards Metals creators have stressed the network's basis of Bank Secrecy Act. ZO, Compliance Developers may create and apply asset transfer rules on Metal Blockchain's X-Chain subnet. A token may be issued with some limitations, such as being used exclusively by residents of the United States or being unavailable for trade until the next day. Metal was one of the first blockchain networks to be included as a FedNow service provider. And although the precise criteria for integration with FedNow remain unknown, Metal's adherence to regulatory requirements undoubtedly contributed to its participation. The integration between Metal Blockchain and FedNow paves the way for the creation of distributed bank chains. This paves the way for the development of a more robust ecosystem for the blockchain, one that provides security and does away with the need for Oracle. By maintaining a connection to FedNow, Banks may coordinate payment processing and settlements. In addition, the adoption of a CBC and the creation of bank issued stablecoins that can interact within a basket of stablecoin currencies are both made easier thanks to this connection. Some U.S. politicians, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and U.S. presidential candidate Robert Kennedy Jr., are worried about the privacy implications of the integration of FedNow and Metal Blockchain and see it as a first step toward a blockchain based despite its potential benefits, despite its potential benefit. The Federal Reserve, meanwhile, has disputed that FedNow is affiliated with a CBETS. Metallicus co-founder and CEO Marshall Hayner responded to complaints about C's by saying they will be subjected to the same degree of scrutiny as the conventional banking system. The integration of Metal Blockchain with FedNow, he said, would improve the current financial infrastructure and promote safe and efficient payment processing between banks, therefore putting to rest the issues surrounding CBIKES. Finally, the integration of FedNow and Metal Blockchain represents a significant step forward in the world of fast payments and decentralized finance. Because of this connection, consumers may easily exchange fiat currency for stablecoins, opening the door to greater financial inclusion and efficiency. Metal Blockchain's approach to regulatory compliance and the possibility of distributed bank chain show how conventional banking institutions and blockchain technology are converging, a trend that will shape the future of digital payments. As the upcoming case between Ripple and the SEC nears its conclusion, Bob Rass, co-founder of Sologenic, went to Twitter to express his thoughts on the SEC's handling of cryptocurrency legislation. According to Rass, the crypto industry is already seeing the ripple effects of the sex's strong posture. He claims that the sex's attempts to categorize practically all digital assets as securities demonstrate a lack of understanding of these unique technology, resulting in wasteful legal fights for businesses such as Ripple. Raz feels that the sex has accidentally hampered its own growth by chasing too many crypto initiatives many of which have no justification. He argues that such a strategy would stifle innovation and drive many projects to seek friendlier offshore location. Companies like Ripple, he claims, are obliged to contend with this hostile regulatory environment. Raz compares the sex to a typical legislator seeking to apply obsolete rules to a technology it hardly understands. He contends that digital assets are a new class and that considering them just as securities ignores their distinct characteristics and possibility. Raz believes that the SECU would have been smarter to design a regulatory framework that takes into account the unique character of these assets. 
Rass also notes that subsequent developments in the Ripple litigation have shown contradictions in the sex position. He contends that there are plausible grounds to suspect that not all digital assets meet the requirements for classification as securities. He claims that these findings might have an influence on other companies, such as Coinbase. Roz urges the SEC to forsake its enforcement. Heavy strategy in favor of a regulatory structure that supports innovation while still protecting investors. He cautions. In other developments, Ripple Labs, <laughs> Pearl Labs Garlinghouse said at the Dubai Fintech Summit that the business plans to invest $1 billion in expanding its services. Ripple, according to Garlinghouse, intends to extend its reach beyond cross-border payments and liquidity supply via organic and acquisition growth. Investments will be focused toward markets that are known to be favorable to blockchain technology. Attorney John Deaton, the creator of crypto law and a pro-excerpt lawyer, remarked on William Hyman's contentious speech in 2018, contesting the sex's contention that the statement was solely Hyman's opinion. In a tweet yesterday, Deaton emphasized that Hyman's contentious speech had much too much influence from senior SEC officials to be considered his own view. The speech has 63 emails and 52 drafts from key SEC officials, according to the Proxer Up lawyer. Deaton said this in a comment on his July 2022 tweet on the document's email chain. Only the Ethics Office and Ethics Chief Dinge Serrano are not on the email chain with Hyman's documents, according to Deaton last year. Meanwhile, Deaton's newest tweet elicited criticism from members of the crypto community. Mark Fagel, a former SEC lawyer, also commented on the article. Fagel reminded Deaton of a Securities and Exchange Commission notion. According to Fagel, any comment made by an SEC employee that is not part of an enforcement action or a regulation agreed on by the agency's five commissioners is always assumed to reflect the speaker's views alone. He inquired as to why people are still perplexed by the sex's stance on the topic. Deaton responded to the criticism by emphasizing that people grasp the idea. However, he contended that the sex's arguments are invariably transactional, prompting Judge Sarah Netburn to call them out. Previously, the U.S. District Judge condemned the commission's attorneys of disobeying the law. Deaton's new comments emphasize the fallout from Henman's 2018 Yahoo Finance All Markets Summit address. During his lecture, Hyman proclaimed Ethereum and Bitcoin to be non-securities. The remark drew attention from the crypto community when Ripple demanded the materials that led to the speech's composition. The paper, known colloquially as Henman's Documents, details internal sect debates around the speech. Remember that when Ripple mentioned the paper, the sect stated that the speech represented Hyman's viewpoint, not the commission's. Deaton has maintained his opposition. After Judge Sarah Netburn refused the sex application to seal the documents, the sex revised its stance. It is worth noting that, as previously reported by the crypto basic Judge Annalisa Torres, just ordered the unsealing of High Man's records in her latest judgment. Following the ruling, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said that the company's attorneys will guarantee that High Man's documents were made public with no redactions. According to reports, the address will be published on June 13, 2020. Three. However, there's persistent speculation that Hyman's documents may never be seen since the Sea and Ripple may reach an agreement before the deadline. At the time of publication, it was unclear if the parties were considering the details of a prospective settlement.